Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Property Management 101, and today I'll be discussing best practices for employee reviews. If you've already done so, please watch my disclosure video as well as my why I do this video. And if you find this video helpful and learn something new, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. At the end of this video, I'll be offering a bonus best practice to keep in mind for your preparation for employee reviews. This video will apply for anyone in the industry that is a supervisor or at least one employee. Number one best practice to keep in mind when performing your employee reviews, have data ready. Have some data ready to share with the employee between the time they, you conducted their last employee review until this employee review. This will be really helpful to show progress as well as really numbers stick out with employees as well. For, here's a couple ideas and suggestions that you may be able to utilize for your employee reviews. For maintenance, for example, you, you, know, you can actually pull how many work orders have been completed and conduct an average per day. You can look at average turnaround time per work order. You can look at average time it takes to turn units or any survey results that were conducted um, on behalf of the grounds of the property. For leasing, you could actually track how many applications that leasing agent has signed, how many move-ins they performed, what their closing ratio was, how much has rent roll gone up since their last employee review. For system managers, you could use things like delinquency percentage or judgments one. So these are all just a few suggestions you could use for data points when you're conducting your employee reviews. Number two best practice to consider when conducting your employee reviews, don't have any improvement surprises. If there are any areas that you feel the employee that needs to work on to conduct their job, I would not recommend the first time they hear about these to be on a job performance review. You should be conducting these types of conversations as soon as you notice these actions or shortly after. Employee review should be a meeting where you're reviewing the goals and progress of those goals with that employee. Which leads me to my third point, share goals. Share goals with the employee that you have for them as well as what the team goals are and how their individual goals impact the team's goals. This will be really important to make sure the employee, the employee is very clear of what they need to do to achieve those goals, as well give them the opportunity, if they do have questions about that, an opportunity to ask those questions and get those answers. And here is a bonus tip for this video. Have the employee complete a little bit of homework prior to your performance review with them. Now, you may be asking, what kind of homework do they need to be providing? I would have them answer about five or six questions prior and that they bring those answers to those questions to that employee review. And you can even lead off the employee review meeting with their answers to these questions. And here's just a few suggestions what you may have or what you may use for those questions. What are their personal goals as an employee? What are their goals for their teams or any employees that they're responsible for? Did they have any questions for you as their supervisor? Is there anything they'd like to see changed with their job or as the property as a whole? Is there any areas that they feel that we have an opportunity to improve on? So these are just a few things that I think gets the ball rolling as well as get that interaction. The conversation and tip that I would have regarding this that would really help is that it should be a two-way street when it comes to employee review. It shouldn't be the supervisor doing all the talk and then that employee just listening. It should be both ways to help address any questions that may be unanswered as well as bring up any concerns. I would strongly recommend too giving them enough time to answer these questions and give it some thought. Don't send them these questions the day of or the day before. I would send them out at least a week prior to give them some thought and let them know we will be reviewing these questions at our employee review, so please have these answers ready. If you do have any questions about this video or any of my videos, feel free to comment below and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you found this video helpful and learned something new. If so, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. Happy leasing.